الحمد للہ رب العالمین صلاۃ وسلام علیہ سیدنا محمد علی وصاب اجمعین رسپیکٹڈ برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم و اللہ آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الزین آمن و الزین حادو و نصارہ و صابین من آمن بلّہ و الیوم الآخر و مل صالحن فلاحم اجر ہوں در ربہم ولا خوف علیہم ولا یاضنون دوز ہو بلیو ان دی قرآن اینڈ دوز ہو فالو دی جوش اسکرپچر اینڈ دی کرسچنس اینڈ دی سیبینس اینی ہو بلیو ان دی لاسٹ ڈے اینڈ ورک رائچسنس شل ہیو دی ریوارڈ ود دی لوڈ اینڈ آن دیم شل بی نو فیئر نور شل دی گریف Brothers, I was having a discussion with a priest <coughs> who was involved in education. And he said to me that, why do you say that only Muslims will enter Jannah? <coughs> so I read this ayah to him <coughs> and mentioned to him that, according to the Holy Quran, <coughs> any who believes In the Quran, the Jewish scripture believes and is a Christian, Hosebian, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and works righteousness shall have nothing to fear. But of course the criteria being that they must not stubbornly reject any prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that in the times of Jesus, peace be upon him, the Jews that were there they were stubbornly rejecting Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him. And of course now, um, if the message has not been passed on, so of course they don't know. But if they do know that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came with a revelation, and they stubbornly reject him. Stubbornly means that they know that he was a true messenger of God Almighty, They know that the Quran is the true revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they deny it, they reject it stubbornly. So therefore, it's not applicable to them. And then he said, why do you call us kafirs? So I then said to him that if you read the Holy Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, it tells us, قُلْ يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالُوا إِلَىٰ كَمَلَةٍ إِلَىٰ كَلَمَةٍ سَوَائِنْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ Say, O people of the book, come to common terms as between us and you that we worship none but Allah. So Jews and Christians, the Holy Quran calls them people of the book, does not call them kafirs. Calls them people of the book because as the Musa alayhi salam, he received the Torah, as the Yusa Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, he received the Injil, the present day Bible, which we know is not in its entirety the word of God, but nevertheless, the certain portions of the words of God are still there. So the Holy Quran calls them people of the book. They are not called kafirs. So kafirs are those who stubbornly reject the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knowingly reject a prophet and messenger of God Almighty. So the term that Quran uses are Muslims, believers, non-Muslims who don't be, do not believe, polytheists who associate or ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, and we have Mormons, the true believers, and we have kafirs, So kafirs are those who, are, who stubbornly reject the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who stubbornly reject the prophets of God Almighty. So we can say that Satan, Shaitan, is the greatest of the kafirs because he knowingly rejects the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can say that Pharaoh was a kafir because despite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed so many miracles, 
through Hazrat Musa salam, but he rejected stubbornly. He knew that he, he is obviously one, a chosen messenger of God Almighty, but he rejected it. In the times of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we can say Abu Jahl was a kafir because he knew that he is a true messenger of God. He knew that he is Alameen. He knew that he has never told a lie in his life. He knew that what he's saying is true, but he stubbornly disbelieved, like Abu Lahab also. And Abu Jahl gave reasons also that why he doesn't want to believe. And we won't go into that because that's another subject. But I explained to him that, look, the point is, while talking to this priest, I mentioned to him that, you see, Moses, peace be upon him, he never preached Judaism. He couldn't have preached Judaism because Judah was the name of the eldest son of Jacob, and he couldn't have preached that. And rabbi, talking to rabbis, they tell us that, you see, a Jew is still a Jew even if he's an atheist. Atheist meaning that he doesn't believe in God Almighty, but he's still a Jew. He's a Jew by virtue of lineage, not by virtue of belief or religion. And I said to him that, you see, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, he never preached Christianity. Nowhere in the Bible do we read that Jesus, peace be upon him, he preached Christianity. It was a term imposed by the non-followers of Christ, imposed on the followers of Christ. They called them Christians, those who follow Christ. And of course, that's what they were. And so they accepted the term and accepted to be called Christians. So the point is that if Moses, peace be upon him, he did not preach Judaism, and Jesus, peace be upon him, he didn't preach Christianity. What did they preach? Well, the Holy Quran tells us that all prophets and messengers of God Almighty preached only Islam. Islam means one who accepts and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who accepts his commandments, who accepts all the prophets and messengers of God Almighty, and follows the teachings. So, that is Islam. And a person who follows Islam is called a Muslim. So, this is something I said you have to ponder over because you call yourself Christians, but Jesus, peace be upon him, he never preached Christianity. So, from a Muslim perspective, from Islamic perspective, we can say that Judaism and Christianity can be called as sects of Islam. So, to this he nodded his head. So, now he said, but you see, you call other countries, you call them Darul Kufr and you call them Darul Harb. Well, you see, in the times of the Prophet, peace be upon him, no such terminologies were used because we know that they didn't accept his message in Mecca. Only some 60, 70 people accepted Islam over a period of 13 years. And so he had to migrate to Medina. But when he went to Medina, it wasn't called Darul Islam. And Mecca and Taif, who rejected his message, they were not called Darul Kufr. It's a term, or Darul Harb for that matter. It's a term that is that was introduced by uh, alims or ulmas or scholars much later on. So this, these terms are not really valid according to the Islamic teachings. What we can say, however, that you have countries with Muslim majority, and we can call them Darul Islam, the countries where Muslims reside, or at least majority of them reside, and the others where Muslims are in minority or hardly any Muslims, we can call them they are countries of non-Muslims. But we cannot call them Darul Harb or Darul Kufr. You see, in India, when we had the British and they overthrew the Muslim rulers there, the Muslim kings, and uh, our ulmas then were disenchanted, and they said we should now call India Darul Harb, a country where we should wage war, war against. But later on, they realized that, and much later on, uh, the, the other ulmas again, they said that we should never have called India Darul Harb. We should have called it Darul Dawa. Darul Dawa means there is a country with a majority non-Muslim population, and as it's a duty of every Muslim, men, women, and children, to pass on the message of Islam, so it's a, we are duty-bound, therefore, to pass the message of Islam to them. And therefore, India, after the British took over, should have been called Darul Dawa, not Darul Harb. And had they called it Darul Dawa, and had they passed on the message of Islam to those incoming rulers, the, the British, maybe our history would have been different today. So, this is the message for today. We are here in this country. It is, by and large, so far a non-Muslim country. 
And unless Mahat Allah has placed us here for a certain purpose, for a certain duty, no doubt we are here primarily to maybe earn a better living, but we should make this secondary. We should make it as our primary duty to pass on the message of Islam. Passing the message of Islam by our character, by our words, by our deeds, so that the other people will ask us. You know, these people, wherever they go, you know, they keep everything clean, they speak the truth, they keep their promises, you know, they're straightforward people, they're nice to deal with. So these are the kind of character we should have and these are the kind of impression impact we should be spreading and passing on to the people that we deal with. So may we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge, the wisdom, the courage and the guidance to pass on the message of Islam to one and all, inshallah. Wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.